Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord God, for the beauty of your presence that's here among us, oh God. Lord, we're so, so thankful that you're a God that shows up, oh God, just like you promised that you would. Lord Jesus, your presence is here with us, oh God. And Lord, we thank you, Father, for a wonderful time, oh God, of being in your presence, of being able to worship you, Lord. And Lord, we thank you for this portion of, Lord God, the meeting that's important as well, Lord God, where we worship you in our giving. I pray, Father, that you would bless this offering, God. Multiply it, God, for the furtherance of your kingdom. You know what the needs are, oh God, and you know the needs of every person in this place, oh God. And Lord, as we freely give, Lord God, you will, Lord God, supply for all of our needs according to your riches and glory. God, we pray for every person, Lord God, that's here tonight, those who can give and those who cannot give, bless them the same. We ask all of these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Or should you may come and collect our tithes and offerings. I was thinking about um, things that are needed to, uh, uh, when you build, and um, uh, I was thinking of uh, when you build, the first thing you have to do is, is you have to break ground somewhere. And uh, in, in cities, uh, when, when uh, a, a big structure or an important building is about to be built or some community of something, usually the politicians come out and there's a, a big uh, ribbon cutting ceremony and then there is the ceremony of that first shovel in the ground to break up the ground. It's called breaking ground. You know, one of the things that I appreciate when I walk into a place uh, such as when we walked into this building, uh, someone once prayerfully broke ground here. And uh, if you look out in the lobby, there's a shovel, the shovel that we used to dig that, to break that first piece of ground. And someone did that in faith, believing that uh, God was going to use this place to bring glory and honor to his name. And here we are so many years later, uh, lifting up the name of Jesus in this place because someone broke ground. And I wanted to talk about that. And there's this verse that uh, has been on my heart for over a week. Uh, and I wanted to just concentrate on this verse tonight and see what the Lord will have to say to us. It's Hosea chapter 10, verse 12. It says the following, sow for yourselves righteousness, reap steadfast love, break up your fallow ground, for it is time to seek the Lord, that he may come and rain righteousness upon you. Break up your fallow ground, for it is time to seek the Lord. It is time to seek the Lord. But... I wanted to break this down little by little because there's so much that this verse says. First of all, it says, so for yourselves. You know, uh, I think of the many things that we do as believers, the uh, many times that we help people and our focus is always God and others. But this particular passage of scripture says, so for yourselves. In other words, so into yourself. Because if you don't sow into yourself, you'll have nothing to give anybody else. How many know God wants you to grow inside so that you will have something to give somebody else? You can't make it up. You can't go out giving out to others when you yourself are not being productive. How many say amen? amen. I love to minister to others and to help others. But here, the Lord is admonishing to sow for ourselves. So how is it with you? Are you sowing for yourself? Are you planting seeds of righteousness for yourself? That's what it is. What are you sowing? You're sowing righteousness. But we have a little problem. How do you sow righteousness when the word of God tells us that our righteousness is as filthy rags? <laughs> and that there's none righteous, not even one. That's Romans uh, 3.22. So what about that? Well, since righteousness comes from God, 2 Corinthians 5.21 says, God made him who had no sin to be sin for us, so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. 
And Romans 3.22 says this, The righteousness is given through faith in Jesus Christ to all who believe. So where is the righteousness coming from? It's coming from Jesus, and it's given to all who, through faith in Jesus Christ, believe in him. So now we have something to sow. It's not our righteousness, but it's the righteousness of Christ that he gives us when we believe in him. How many say amen? Now, the seeds of righteousness come from fruit. How many know fruit has seeds? And the seeds of righteousness, the fruit that go from the righteousness, are this. This is what God is telling us to sow inside of us. It's the fruit of the Spirit. What is it? Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. So the fruit, the seeds that we are supposed to sow in righteousness are the very nature and character of God. So how do you get those seeds for that fruit? Well, Jesus said, if a person abides in me and I in them, they will do what? Anybody know? They will do what? They will bear how much fruit? Much fruit. So the seeds come from the fruit. The fruit is the fruit of the Holy Spirit. So now we sow righteousness, sow those seeds into us. So imagine if all of us, all of those fruit were growing at the same time. How much do you think you could accomplish wherever you are? Think about it. Think about it. If in you were growing the seeds and the fruit of love, of joy, of peace, of patience, of kindness, of faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. How much could we accomplish? You think maybe like the disciples, they turned the world upside down. How did so few people change the whole world that here 2,000, over 2,000 years later, we're sitting in a building because they turned the world upside down because they had the fruit, they sowed the fruit of righteousness and the world didn't know what to do about it. And you know what? It's not time to sit back because of all the work that they did. We have to keep moving forward. There's more ground to conquer. How many say amen? amen. So we sow for ourselves righteousness. And then we reap something. We reap steadfast love according to this verse. So for yourselves righteousness, reap steadfast love. Another version says we reap mercy. Because this love, what that is, is that the fruit is multiplied in you by his love. The seed that's sown, if the ground is right, always yields a lot more than what you planted. I was just checking out for curiosity's sake. Because around here they grow a lot of corn. There's corn everywhere. And I was saying, okay, so you plant one kernel of corn, what does that yield? That yield uh, a plant, and it usually the average is two to three ears of corn. Each ear of corn has about an average of 700 kernels. So one kernel produces 2,100 kernels. Talk about 30. 60 and 100 fold, how about 2,700 fold? One little kernel of uh, seed produces, and, and imagine if you sow uh, 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 just a whole, heart, uh, a whole field full of kernels, all of the, 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 the produce that comes out from that. And God is, wants us to be that fruitful. In other words, he's that awesome. It's not supposed to be a trickle or, or you know, just a, a, you ever see a, a, a fruit tree that's not doing so hot? I have a pear tree that's not so hot. I inherited a pear tree, and it's ugly. It's ugly. It's in the front of the house. And pears do grow, but they're ugly pears. I tasted one once. <laughs> and it wasn't that bad, but it's ugly. You got to get through the ugly part to eat it. 
But it, it, obviously the tree is not well. Uh, I don't know what to do about it except pray. I, I, I'm not, <laughs> I don't have a green thumb. I don't know what to do with trees that, are, that need help. But uh, you know what? God wants us to be not only a full, healthy tree, but that we will have full, healthy fruit. Amen? Amen. Multiplied over and over. But before you can sow, you have to break up the fallow ground. Before anything happens, the ground has to be broken. Let me tell you what fallow ground is. Fallow ground is unplowed ground. It's ground that has not been plowed. And ground that has not been plowed, first of all, is hard. It's hard because if you let ground sit, it gets trampled on, it gets walked on, it gets rained on, it gets blown on by the wind, harsh weather, snow, all kinds of things, dry heat. And if you see a ground that hasn't been touched, just go to your backyard if you haven't touched it. You know, I, I, uh, I found out, you know, when I, I'm, I'm a city, city boy, and uh, I decided while I was there in the city, uh, later on in life when, when the boys were born, that we were going to try camping. And I, I didn't know anything about camping, you know, whatsoever. And the first time we went with a, with a tent and you know, you have to put it together with the little sticks and everything, and then you have to secure the tent. So how hard could that be? You're, you're, you're just banging this thing into the dirt, right? You ever try to bang a, a, a tent peg into hard ground? And then the first ones that I bought, it, had, it were plastic tent pegs. Yeah, ooh, <laughs> somebody just winced. Yeah, I, I, I had to go to the store, and I had to buy more, and then I found that they had these metal ones, and, it, and, 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 and when it's real hard ground, and, and I would bend, they would bend, because the ground was rock hard. So imagine the ground of our hearts when it's not plowed. How is anything supposed to get in there? Listen, we get trampled on. We have to uh, endure severe weather times in our life, some difficult times, some storms in our life. And before you know it, if your heart is not plowed, if the ground of your heart is not plowed, it gets hard. And a hardened heart yields nothing. It's a sad case. So God is telling us tonight to sow, yes, sow in righteousness, yes, and you'll reap, yes, but you have to break up that fallow ground. Unplowed ground is also ground that has weeds and thorns. Weeds and thorns don't bode well, and it has rocks too. So when you break up that ground, you bring up those rocks that get in the way of the roots, and you uproot weeds and thorns. Now, according to the word of God, when in, in, in the book of Matthew, Mark, and Luke, the uh, parable of the, the, the good soil, the bad soil, here's what the weed and, and the, uh, the thorns represent. The worries and cares of life. That'll mess up any seed growing in your life. The deceitfulness of wealth. If you get caught up with your career, with making, uh, you know, a mint or, you know, just accumulating things, that also is a weed or a thorn for your ground. The desire for other things, that's in Mark chapter 4, verse 19. What does that mean? The desire for other things. In other words, what the Word of God is saying there, your de desire for other things more than your desire for God. It will pull you away 
from the very life that God wants to give you. Let me tell you, as you go further and further away from God, you are actually moving further and further away from life because God is life, he sustains all life, and he holds all life together. And your desire for other things will draw you away from the very life that God wants you to have. Also, riches and pleasures. If you're living life for pleasures, also that's a weed or a thorn that will mess up the ground. And it needs to be plowed and uprooted. How many say amen? amen. So unplowed ground is hard. Unplowed ground has uh, weeds and thorns that need to come up. <clears throat> but here's another thing that fallow ground is. You know what fallow ground is? It's unused ground. Fallow ground is ground that's not being used. And here's the thing that the Lord was speaking to my heart today. You may have many aspects of your life. We're very complicated human beings. And you may have very, uh, a lot of areas in your life that you've given over to God. And you've surrendered. But when we surrender, we don't do it in one fell swoop. We should. But we do it in pieces. And even if you surrendered a lot, there may be some ground that's not being used. And ground that's not being used becomes hard. And weeds and thistles and thorns begin to grow. And it's practically useless. So the question for us tonight is, is there ground in your heart, in your life, that you've never given over to be plowed and cultivated, planted, and harvested? Is, your, is there a part of you that's being wasted? Perhaps you put off plowing that part because of a hurt that you went through or some pain or, or pain that was things that you don't want to face, things that are too difficult or too painful, past hurts. How about failures? Failures will keep you from uh, uh, using or going towards some ground. You kind of ignore it because you don't think you're uh, worthy enough. When, I remember, you know, when, when uh, uh, Missy and I finally uh, got our act together and the Lord began to bless us as a, as a married couple and, and then uh, God opened the door a few years later for me to be in the ministry, and that was all well and good. I was just so happy. I uh, never had planned to go into the ministry, but God changed my heart. But then, a little later on, the prospect of marriage ministry was presented to us. And you know what our first reaction was? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. Why? Because we knew the failures that we had. And we didn't feel qualified or we didn't feel uh, like we deserved to help anybody else because we ourselves had failed at it, although God had healed us. Our failure was keeping us from allowing God to plow that ground that he wanted to use. So my pastor challenged me and he said something that I couldn't say no to. Because I said no to him. And he said, okay, well, would you pray about it first? Well, how can I say no to that? <laughs> well, sure, I'll pray. And I went home and I told Missy what, uh, what the pastor wanted us to do. And she had the same reaction. The words that came out of her mouth were exactly this, absolutely not. And I said, I know, right? And I said, but the pastor asked us to pray. She was okay. Uh, how can you say no to that? So we began to pray. And as we began to pray, I don't know what was happening with her. Well, I, I do. But I know what was happening to me. That first week, 
my ground started to be plowed. I couldn't believe it. You know, I was speaking to somebody a couple of weeks ago about how ministry happens in your heart or how you're birthed into ministry. You know, a lot of people think is that you have a passion for something and then God opens the door and you could take your passion into it. It happens that way. But you know what? I didn't have a particular passion for a marriage ministry. I was very grateful for what God had done in us. And I could tell you a thing or two about the mistakes that we made and, and why we got to the place that we got. But I didn't have this over, you know, thing of, oh, marriage, oh, yeah. But God started to plow my heart, and I started allowing him to. And all of a sudden, seeds started dropping in there, and I started to get this burden that God gave me. And I woke up in the middle of the night that we, I can't tell you how many times, and God was dropping in what he wanted me to do, how he wanted me to do it, what not to do, how to start. But I had one problem. <coughs> Missy. <laughs> I, I got it, but I didn't know what was going on with her. So I prayed, Lord, of all things, this is marriage ministry. If you're speaking to my heart, you're going to have to speak to her heart. So we prayed for a month, actually. And I knew after the first week, I don't know how long it took for her, but after a month, uh, the pastor asked me, okay, uh, it's been a month, you know, have you heard anything? I said, well, I said, tell you what, I'll tell you tomorrow. I'll, let me go home and speak to my wife about it. And when I got home, I asked her. I said, babe, I, I, I have a sense of what God is saying, but I, I want to hear from your heart first. And then she looked at me, and immediately I know, I knew that her ground had been plowed. Because she just looked at me and she goes, he wants us to do it. <laughs> no, that ground. <laughs> oh, my goodness. And so we prayed. We prayed. But, but think about it. The, the, you know, our, our minds, our, 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 our emotions told us, you can't do that. Come on, look at look how you did. You know, this uh, disqualified. Timmy, if you'd come. But that was keeping or could have kept that hard, unplowed ground there, and we never would have experienced the glory of God and all that he wanted to do. Let me tell you something about seeds, uh, sowing seeds of righteousness. The first recipient of the blessing is you. Yes. Yes. Have you ever seen a tree that's full of awesome fruit? It's an awesome-looking tree. Yes. It's a healthy tree. It's a beautiful tree. It's a strong tree. Right? It's being blessed by the, and the fruit is just a sign of how their life, uh, uh, how its life is just full. Right? And, and the same way with us. As that fruit grows in us, the first recipient of the juice from the fruit is you. You begin to be healthy, and, and your leaves are always green no matter what the season. Like the Bible says, it, your, your, your roots go down into that stream of ever-living water that you don't ever thirst. You're always in season. And maybe you can't envision fruit in, in, in a certain part of your heart. Maybe you've never bothered to check it out. But God is saying, he wants, he always wants, he looks for more. You know, uh, I was just thinking about that. You never reach the, you know, where you reach a plateau. And God's not interested so much in what you know how to do and what you're doing right now. He's interested in what more you're going to go for, what more he wants to do. He wants those areas that you 
haven't given him. You can't hide it from him. You know, we're like bad magicians. You ever seen a bad magician trying to do a trick? Right? They hide, they, they're going to take a coin out of the air, but you see the coin in their hand? That's how it is with God. We try to hide our stuff, but he sees right through it. I see it. It's right there. Come on, let me have it. How many of you here, God wants to do something in your life, a new thing. He's always doing a new thing. Listen, if you are getting old and wasted away in your soul, it's that there's something going to miss because God does new things. His mercies are new every morning. He gives you a new song. And those new songs come from that ground being plowed up and producing new food in areas that you never even imagined. I'm telling you from my own life, fruit that you never even imagined, places that you never even imagined that you'd go to in, in, in life. God is just amazing. It's an amazing adventure. how do you do that? How do you break up that ground? It, it, it's, it's right here. Break up your fallow ground. Can you put that verse back up, the first verse, Sam, he, Hosea 10, 12? Go to the next slide. Break up your fallow ground, for it is time to seek the Lord. You want to break up your fallow ground? It's not a mystery. Seek the Lord with all your heart. As you seek the Lord, I'm telling you, he will break up that ground for you. It's in travailing in prayer, in tears, and with God moving inside of your heart. You can feel it being plowed up. Oh, my goodness. It's, it's a real thing that happens. And then, then the word of God says, as you break up that fallow ground by seeking the Lord, it says, the Lord will rain down righteousness on you. You know what that, you know what that means? It's, it's like the God of more than enough. In other words, the Lord, as you break up that fallow ground and you allow him to, you know, and you're sowing fruits of righteousness, listen, he rains down even more. He'll come into your life like he's never come before. If you think you know the Lord now, hang on to your hat if you have one. If you think you are close to God, hang on because there's so much more. And as you go for it, as you allow that ground to be broken up, he will rain down. God is into outpouring, not trickles. He's not a trickle-down God. He's an outpouring God. He's a God that rains down a deluge of righteousness upon you. Hallelujah. And he will make you more fruitful than ever before, than ever before. And you will know that you know that you know that it's not you, that it is God. We studied a verse a few weeks ago, 2 Corinthians 3.18, where it says that you go from glory to ever-increasing glory. That's what raining down his righteousness on you. You go from glory, listen to the next step. It's not just glory to glory. It's glory to ever-increasing glory. That means God has more and more and more. And when you think you've got it, he has more and more and more. And when you think you've reached the end, you find out you're not even scratching the surface yet. Because this God that we serve is so deep. His love is so deep we can't even understand it unless God touches us and we get a little inkling like looking through a dark glass to understand a little bit. And that blows you away. We serve an awesome God. But the message tonight is to break up that fallow ground. Break it up. So in righteousness, let God move on your heart. And those of you that God is using, listen, what area of your life 
is he after? What area of your heart is still unsurrendered? He wants that too. Listen, everything that he touches, it multiplies. Everything that he touches comes to life. I was reading today the story of the procession, a funeral procession was coming and, and, and Jesus was coming into the town and the woman had lost her son and it was her only son and she was a widow and he had compassion and no one asked him to do it but he went up to the casket, the coffin as they were carrying it and he touched it and he spoke to the boy inside and he says, come on up out of there. And the boy came up. I can imagine the pallbearers. You know, what do you do then? I can imagine that commotion. Everything that Jesus touches comes to life. What needs to be plowed in your life? What needs to be brought to life in your, in your life? What has died or perhaps never lived yet? Let's bow our heads and close. Hallelujah. 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 Lord Jesus, here we are, Father. Here we are, Lord God, in your presence, Lord God. You're speaking to us tonight, oh God. Lord, there are so many, uh, Lord, different situations and hearts represented here this evening, oh God. But Lord, you know you know exactly who was going to be here, Father. You laid this heavy on my heart. I know, God, you want to do a work in all of us, oh God. It's not for one of us, Lord God. It's for all of us. There's not one of us that can say, oh God, that our hearts are completely tilled and, and perfect before you, God. Lord, there is still work that you're doing in each one of us, oh God. And Lord, each work that you do frees us more and more, oh Lord God. Help us, Lord God. Lord, show us those areas. Point them out to us. Sometimes we are not honest with ourselves, oh God. Sometimes you have to show us, oh God. And Lord, some of us know. Some of us know what we're running away from, oh God. What we feel, Lord God, that we don't want to revisit because of a past hurt, Oh, God, we're a past failure, Lord Jesus. But you're calling us, oh, God. It is time to break up that foul ground. It is time to seek the Lord so that it can be broken up, Lord Jesus. Help us tonight, Lord God, I pray.